How valuable is your health? I learned very early on that health is pretty important. When I was 14 years old, my grandmother took my siblings and I out for a treat at one of our favorite eating spots. It was a steakhouse. Thank you very much. It was a steakhouse. Shortly thereafter, she received a phone call. We've got to go, she said. It took her about 45 minutes or so to get us back home when she received a second phone call. Kaylin, he's gone. And while a cold feeling came over me, and I had a million questions to ask, the look on her face explained everything. My grandfather passed away. He suffered a massive heart attack and died en route to the hospital. And the thing is, I just saw him two days prior. And the day I saw him, he looked okay. And I can remember having a conversation with him, telling him how his belly had become really, really big, and that maybe some of the food that he was eating wasn't the best choice. And he made a weird comment to me saying, ah, raindrop, don't worry about me. I'm going to die with my belly full. You see, we're from South Carolina, where good Southern cooking is a part of every family function. Almost everything is fried, and meat is usually the main event. And it doesn't help either that most people, especially in my family, are known to have the sugar. Uh, no one should live their life believing that type 2 diabetes is normal. But as weird as that comment was to me, I could only hope that he got his wish. Because on the day he died, he went to a local eating spot. He ordered a plate of wings and a pitcher of beer. He grabbed his chest and suffered cardiac arrest in the worst way. And he didn't even finish his food. I later learned that it was his diet that led to his demise. Poor choice of food and years of drinking alcohol put an insurmountable amount of stress on his body. And it didn't help that he was sedentary either. And I realized that at that moment, I needed to change. And I said, you know, it's got to change with me. I started on my journey to seek and obtain optimal health. I played sports in high school and college. I even joined the Marine Corps, which, by the way, you have no choice but to be an elite fighting machine. I became solely whole food plant-based, and I teach dance, fitness, and urban agriculture to children in my community. I made it my mission at 14 to promote health and wellness in my community by teaching and educating about the power of food. But people would need access to this food. And it was clear to see for me that our communities were changing, but not necessarily to our benefit. The more I saw liquor stores and fast food places show up, the more I realized that people in my family as well as my community were getting sicker. My community turned into a food desert. Food deserts are areas where residents can't access affordable, healthy food options, especially fruits and vegetables, or restricted or non-existent due to grocery stores not being within a convenient traveling distance. For instance, an estimated 750,000 New York City residents live in food deserts, while another 3 million people live in areas where grocery stores that sell fresh produce are few or far away. People are dying not necessarily because of the lack of food, but from poor nutritional quality, which leads to an array of lifestyle diseases, like your type 2 diabetes, your heart disease, and some cancers. And the scariest realization that I had was that it's affecting our children more and more every day. How are we expected to survive as a people if we're expected to outlive our children? Two of the best leadership principles that I remember from my time as a Marine are know yourself and seek self-improvement and set the example. Pretty straightforward, right? Someone is always watching you and there's always room for improvement. And after many years of service to my country, I decided to be of service within my community by teaching health and wellness through urban agriculture and plant-based living with children. On a side note, Children are some of the most honest people you will ever come across. <laughs> they are always there to provide that raw, honest feedback for you, no filter. And I knew that in order for me to set the example in my community, that I definitely needed that feedback. And that's why I've worked with children for over 18 years. 
But in working with these children, I noticed them physically change. And I noticed their food. Cafeterias were no longer providing foods made from scratch, but more processed or microwaved meals. Snacks that children were being given were heavy in sugar or very greasy, sometimes both. I mean, if we don't get our health together today, right now, on this life's journey, amidst this mess of a food system, then we may never live our lives to the fullest. And again, I knew something had to change. I couldn't change the way children ate or exercised overnight, but if there was some way for me to plant the seed, all puns intended, <laughs> then it would have a lasting effect. Because I realized that in order to change a child's health potential, we needed to provide the tools and the seeds in order to promote a healthier future. But before I get into that, I want to share a fun quotation from Stephen Ritz, who, by the way, is from the South Bronx, and he planted the seed in promoting greener classrooms. He said, I grow vegetables, but my vegetables grow students, lives, opportunities, and schools. So my question for you today is, how does the simple act of teaching a child to plant a seed lead to better health, promote stronger academic performance, and lead to more hopeful communities? The Health is Wealth Project is doing just that. We took the power of aeroponic gardening, applied a curriculum, and delved into teaching our children about urban agriculture and how to economically sustain themselves. Children need to see it in order to be it. And when we teach children about nature, we teach them to nurture and take better care of themselves. In food desert communities, circumstances don't have to be permanent. And we must stop placing the blame on poverty. Our children from those communities can rise to higher expectations. However, we are the ones that have to have those expectations. No child, or anyone for that matter, rises to lowered expectations. And the Health is Wealth, that's why we have the Health is Wealth Project, to afford this opportunity to children in these areas to grow their own food, to harvest it, and maybe even sell it, like having a farmer's market or a co-op within their community. And now we're touching on the spirit of entrepreneurship. The Health is Wealth Project is affordable and replicable. And I know what you may be thinking. Well, how do I bring this Health is Wealth Project to my community? How do I get aeroponic gardens in my school? Here's how we can be the change. Currently, I work with five public schools in Newport News, Virginia, using aeroponic gardens. And I have to say, having these gardens in the classroom have been a game changer. Aeroponic gardens may be the most cost-effective, space-saving, and certainly most replicable way to bring gardening into your classrooms. Our school district allocated funding through grants to help us launch this project for our students. We keep our gardens indoors with grow lights to grow our food all year round. However, you could grow your gardens indoors or outdoors, depending on the location and the weather. You see them building, building their gardens here. We also have our gardens on a dolly, so I'm able to move our gardens around with our students wherever they are and learning can take place. And we also realize that we can grow more in less time with fewer resources using these aeroponic gardens. And because it uses aeroponic technology, which compared to soil gardening, we've increased our yields by 30% and tripling our speed of the plant growth while only using 10% of water and space. Our children get to build their gardens in this program. They plant their seeds. They watch their seedlings grow. And they reap the harvest. I believe that food and farming may be the recipe to help us fix this problem in food deserts. Because think about it. If you want to talk about health care, you can definitely take a look at food and farming. If you want to combat the idea of hunger and poverty, take a look at food and farming. If you want to reduce waste, respond to climate change, make resources more equitable, look at food and farming. But here's the kicker. If you really want to protect our future. Have children engaged in hands-on learning activities in school that involve food and farming. 
I've witnessed how these aeroponic gardens have transformed and using these gardens as a tool to teach children a new way of thinking about their health and we're teaching wellness at the same time. And as educators, we also realize that if a child grows kale and understands the process and health benefits, guess what? They're more than likely to eat the kale. <laughs> it's a win-win situation. And this program brings an opportunity full circle. We are changing the way our children view their communities by turning our food deserts into food oases. I have to admit that there is no greater honor or privilege than giving someone the tools needed to live a healthier lifestyle. So today I say to you, here's to our future, and here's to health as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>